um, asking you questions about their cancer and or treatment. <laughs> For the most part, you pretty much refer them back to their practitioners, to their caretakers, and ask what their limitations should be, don't need to be. If somebody just had a big old surgery, they do not need to ask you when they're allowed to come back. They need to be talking to the surgeon. The surgeon. Not the primary care doctor. Because the surgeon did the surgery and knows what they did and who knows the limitation. If somebody's in chemo, ask them how they feel. If somebody's in radiation, ask them how they feel. Hydration is crucial. It's great for them within their limitations. If they don't look well any given day, ask them if they wouldn't mind excusing themselves from the class because they don't look too well. Okay? It's, you're going to have relationships with these people for the most part. Um, I want to ask if you know what a hiatal hernia is. Do you know what a hiatal hernia is? You've heard the phrase, though? Yeah? Okay. Could almost use the same picture. Not really. <laughs> oh. Oh. This is your body. Your swallowing tube comes down. There's a sphincter here. We have lots and lots of sphincters, not just the butt one. <laughs> Everybody just thinks of the butt one, but we have lots of sphincters. Around each eye, around the mouth. There's one at the top of the stomach. There's one at the bottom of the stomach, too. <laughs> and then there's the small intestines, and then there's the large intestines, blah, blah, blah. The diaphragm goes across this way. And there's a hole in the diaphragm where that goes through. We keep our food in our stomach and not coming back at, out of our mouths again by virtue of this sphincter in conjunction with that diaphragm, the muscle that goes around it. A hiatal hernia is not a pathologic problem. Many, 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 many people have hiatal hernias, like have bulging discs, who never know that they had that. Many, many people have gallstones who don't know they have them. There's lots of people running around with lots of things that our bodies are compensating for. But a hiatal hernia means that this has slipped up here, like that. So that sphincter no longer has the extra support of the diaphragm around it. So sometimes people have a little bit of reflux problem if they have a hiatal hernia. But it's just a word you're going to hear a lot that people misunderstand a lot. That's all that means. I was just giving you that definition. People who have a lot of reflux might not want a lot of, do a lot of bending over if they've eaten. So you could suggest maybe you shouldn't eat heavily before a class if you have that problem. Things that make this worse, things that make reflux worse, fatty foods, big meals, alcohol, having a big tummy or wearing really tight clothes or being pregnant, all the stuff that's going to push up mm -hmm. is going to make reflux kind of worse, which is going to make bending over a problem. Okay? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily a pathologic problem at all, but now you know what the words mean. There are some people who have hiatal hernias so bad that half their stomach's up in their chest. It's really amazing, and they're fine. For the most part, it's crazy what our bodies can make up for. Okay, the piece de resistance. Are you ready? Yeah. This is, you're going to be so smart right now. You holding on? Mm -hmm. It's very high tech. We're going to talk about heart disease. Number one killer of women. Of everybody. <laughs> yes. I just looked up the average life expectancy in 2012 of a woman in this country is 80.8 years. Cool, right? I turned to my mother-in-law, who's 79, and said, Oh, you don't have much time. <laughs> <laughs> she loves me. Stop you. <laughs> she said, let me just check her. Cross me out the wall. Um, okay. Here's a heart. You with me so far? Yeah. It's a too high tech. Watch out. There are four chambers in the heart. 
The left ventricle is the biggest, thickest, fattest part because it's the muscle that has to push the blood all the way through that whole hydraulic system that I told you about. There's a door that comes in here from your whole body, dumps in there. There's a door that goes into the right ventricle, the door that goes out to the lungs to pick up the oxygen, get rid of the carbon dioxide, comes back in here full of oxygen, nice and red. A door here, the mitral valve, and a door that goes out, up behind, and comes out that way to the aorta. Okay? That's the walls and the doors. A normal functioning heart has all those doors are one-way doors, and the walls all contract when they're supposed to, in concert and fully. So, when somebody says they have a heart murmur, all that means is that you can hear the blood going through a door. It doesn't necessarily mean anything bad. Now, if they have a heart murmur because they have mitral valve prolapse, it means that this valve, which is supposed to just go one way, and then when, the, when this squishes, that's supposed to be not go the other way. When you have mitral valve prolapse, it goes out, and then it comes, it buckles back. Prolapse means one thing's going into the next area where it's not supposed to be. So that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Mitral valve prolapse is no longer considered a pathologic problem. It just is. So a murmur just means you're hearing the blood go from one part to another. An echocardiogram, an ultrasound, just looks at the walls and the doors. All right? Great. Next, the electrical system. The electrical system of the heart has this, what's called a sinus node. I don't know what the word sinus means there. It has nothing to do with your sinuses. Sinus node, a wire that goes down to there, kind of literally a wire. There's a little changing station there and a wire that goes through the right side and a wire that goes through the left side. So here's where you get brillianter. When you're looking at an EKG, if anybody tells you that they don't believe in energy medicine, just ask them where they measure EKGs from. They're measuring the electrical activity of the heart from the ankles. <laughs> it's all energy. Okay, sinus node makes a little blip. Takes some time for the electricity to go down that wire and then it goes through the right and left ventricles. It goes a little quicker through the right because there's not a thick muscle, so there's not so much electrical impedance, and it's a little longer to go through the left side because the muscle's a little thicker, there's a more electrical impedance. And then it recovers. And then again, beep, this fires off, spark. Takes a little time for that to go down here, and then right and left, and then recovery. That's an EKG. That's the electrical system. People who have things like atrial fibrillation and PVCs, that's electrical problems. Okay? Have you heard those phrases before? Yes. AFib? Okay. <clears throat> and then there's the plumbing, which we will make blue if this actually worked. It does. Chuck lost the cap last night. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, so we have the oxygenated blood, supposed to go out to the rest of the body. This organ understands that it has to continue to work, so it feeds itself first. So the first thing that comes off is one artery to the right that feeds this side of the heart, and one artery to the left that feeds this side. Now, because this is a big, thick muscle over here, this busts in half. One half goes to the back of the heart, the circumflex, and one half goes to the front of the heart, the left anterior descending. A heart attack has to do with the plumbing. So if you have a big old piece of cholesterol stuck in there, and a little blood clot comes along and clogs it off and you've got no blood flow there, that's a heart attack. 
So this whole piece of muscle can't work. It has no blood flow to it. That in turn affects how the electricity is conducted through that piece of muscle. That's where we can see a heart attack on the EKG because it'll make a difference in how the, the electrical system is working. But it's a plumbing problem. That's a heart attack. Isn't that cool? That's cardiology 101. <laughs> okay. <laughs>